Welcome to the COSB 360 Conversations videocast, the platform for county influencers. This is an organizational and talent development initiative to engage with our leaders and keep our workforce informed. This is also one way to share the efforts of departmental staff in what it takes from a leadership perspective to keep the wheels turning in our organization. This videocast is being hosted by June Mighty, OTD Division Chief. Let's take a look at the leadership perspective. And with the leadership perspective, I'm going to go to a discussion that you and I had regarding Abe Lincoln. Mm. You know, yeah. so let's talk a little bit about that because, you know, of course, leadership is important to me in everything, right? And so you and I were having a conversation about, you know, the, 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 the Civil War and uh, slavery and the, the, the abolishment of slavery and all that was going on. And now with everything in this world, is trying to, to sort of figure out, man, what was, you know, how did he n navigate that? How did he process that um, as a president? And so I thought that was just a really good uh, discussion that we had. So from a leadership perspective, what tips would you share with us from the life of Abe Lincoln? What tips would yeah. you, would you, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna give you, give you, no, share me one tip from Abe, and then I'm gonna go to another person and ask you for one tip from there as well. So first, Abe Lincoln. Hey, oh my gosh. You know, I don't think it's a fair question. I, I, I can talk about him a lot. Um, okay. Uh, because I have, you know, I think a lot of people have always, uh, I have heard a lot of people say and described him as one of the best presidents in, in the United States, but I didn't know much about him. I really just didn't un know about him. And, and, you know, he was not educated. He was self-taught, self-educated. Mm -hmm. He would have become an attorney at some point. And, and there was a lot of loss in his, in his life. Um, and, you know, he's, he's seen as this person who freed the slaves, right? Back, you know, the 13th, 14th Amendment that came thereafter. Um, and here's something that people don't understand. When, when Abraham Lincoln started in his, his political path, it, he always believed that slavery was wrong. He, he's, he's had that thought. But he was really not, he was quoted... Um, saying that they, he didn't think if freed, the two peoples could coexist, which was shocking to me, right? Because the, a lot of the changes that he made um, worked to aim and provide equal, um, equal rights for everybody. And this was in his earlier years of his presidency. And there was a lot of people in his life that, you know, uh, the Republican Party at the time was very, it was just coming up and they were like the abolitionist groups and they really wanted to, to push to free slaves in the North. And he was sort of there, but not quite there. Um, in fact, he, he was um, uh, believed to have said that after free, after the slaves were free, he was considering Central America as a location to, to place uh, this, uh, the, the, sla the free slaves. By the end of his um, four years, the, his four year term, he, he had really just turned- The other way, he pivoted. Yeah. And you know, okay. he, he believed that slavery was not only wrong, uh, but that we all were equal and you know, he got reelected a second time. And obviously we know that three months later he was assassinated. But I, 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 he navigated through that two challenges because you, have, you had two points of views, people that really wanted to go like full extreme and people that said, no, you're doing too much or we can't do that. It's going to affect the economy. It's going to affect, you know, the way that you're viewed. We're not going to win this. And if you really think about it, what it made me realize is that really not much has changed. It's the same level of discussion, right? Is is you have one group that is <laughs> well, right? I mean, the discussion, the the, the nature of the discussion. the nature of the, the nature of the discussion uh, still exists in a different degree, but the the challenge is still the same after all this time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and you know we have to dive deep a little bit about that to show. What I, what I like to tell um, the, the the employees when they attend is is I hope that I that I've gotten you curious to go and research because that's the ability you can't just 
say, oh, Henry said it, it's got to be true. I, in fact, I encourage knowledge and, and development, but a lot of the times we just, sometimes we take it for fact when somebody says something, right? And what I have learned to do, which I had to relearn because the way I was brought up, I was, I was learned, I was taught to not question authority. I mean, it was so engraved in my mentality that whatever it was said, you know, if a blue car, I was told it was actually green, I would have to believe it was green. And I'm obviously exaggerating, providing that level of analogy. But right. the idea is that it's going to provoke curiosity for people to be able to go back. Um, um, and But most importantly, to really explore, right, internally explore why is it that they feel the same way? Why is it that they get upset when we talk about diversity if they do that, right? Or why is right. it that they think that we're not doing enough? The abilities, we have to really reflect on that. And then the other thing too that stands out to me along with this discussion um, of late uh, Abraham Lincoln, before I go into the next person I was gonna ask you about, is the idea of staying true to who you are as a person. And there are times we do have to be aware of our beliefs. We have to be aware of our values. I think one of the things that you brought out um, in a training yesterday and also uh, director of Von Del Renoso, she brought out when she taught, has taught about cultural humility is a, the importance of really knowing who you are and understanding yourself because really you're operating on that based on that truth because there's always different forces Mm -hmm. uh, operating and uh, trying to influence you. And if you have no clue about who you are, what you really want, mm -hmm. then you get caught up in, in, the, in, the, in the chaos of it all. And it just seems to me that um, probably through the loss or whatever had transpired in, in those years, something really grounded him. And I think that um, well, adversity, that yeah, but I think adversity sometimes can ground us and focus us and um, take us to a, a different level that we didn't, uh, and perspectives we didn't see before. And with that being said, now let's go to um, Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. What one thing would you say, you know, even his uh, I have a dream speech, uh, would, you, would you say that resonates with you? Oh my God, what doesn't resonate? I mean, you know, I, I cannot sit here and say that I'm an expert on, you know, there's also Malcolm X, right? There's a lot of other people. There's Julio Cesar Chavez. I mean, there's a lot of very strong figures. Martin Luther King um, was part of a, uh, a very important time, and, and right? Is he, he, and he didn't do it alone. And I think that Abraham also didn't, uh, Abraham Lincoln also didn't do everything alone. There was a number of people a number of people that help evolve, right? That, that either help you, help them do what they did. And, and, and uh, Martin Luther King, you know, started to peacefully wanted to make sure that, that. Hold on, Henry, Henry, before you finish that thought, let's go back to that. You're, you're making a really great point about, um, because no leader does anything on their own, but both of those men died. <laughs> were killed for what they believe. So there, so you do have supporters, don't misunderstand me, it's true. We do have, but sometimes there is that person who is the point or the tip of the spear, yeah. you know? And so with that being said, you know, it's like there, there's a price, there's a cost uh, sometimes for that person who's out front. Yeah, I mean, we can sit here and there's a, a bunch of other names, right? JFK right. also. Was one of those, uh, Malcolm X was one of those, or a few other people that that um, have had that that level of experience. And a lot of it, you know, I can't really speak for why it was done because you know, there's just I don't I don't know enough to know about that. I can only conclude based on what we know, right? But the reality is, is you you're right. There's there's a price, and the price is that you're. You, you have to be prepared for almost anything and everything if you are that voice, right? If you are that individual that's, that's leading whatever that initiative is. Um, and, you know, um, I, I have, a, I like to listen or read books. And so there's quite a few books that I'm, you know, Abraham Lincoln is next actually, because I just finished the, the, the book, The Color of Law that talks about law and how law impacts marginalized groups. The, 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 the negative impact that it's had. And it's quite interesting to, to, to read some of those things. Um, 
And I think that, you know, when I think of uh, Martin Luther King, uh, the marches that he led, the, the speech that he made, the speeches that he made, I mean, he was a, a very powerful speaker. The letters that he sent while he was jailed. Um, and I love that letter. I, I've read that letter. I was, I was somehow enamored with the way that it was written, the way it was skillfully written and addressing the concerns. I was, I had not read that letter fully until I think it was 2018. Yeah. That's when it, I really read it. And I was like, wow. Well, he had a doctorate, right? I think he was, he was called it, it, Dr. Luther King for a reason. And you look, you look <laughs> at the writing, I'm thinking, man, boy, I, I don't know with that spell check. I don't know if I would have done a good job. Well, well, dude, I'm going to be Dr. Mighty Sue, but I don't know that I'm going to deliver the goods like that. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just, yeah. I'm just, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's yeah. just like, it, it was, it was profound. It was profound. Um, yeah. Uh, it, yeah. It, there's a lot of people and, you know, right now there's high emotion. There's, you know, there's a lot of um, uh, uh, civil unrest. And I think that is, uh, we should be understandable of that. There's a lot of circumstances that have led to that. Um, again, I usually just tell, uh, you know, the participants, it, it's always best to pause, reflect and redirect if needed. And I always add if needed, you know what I mean? Because I'm not, I'm not trying to say that people are wrong. What I'm trying to say is that if, unless you reflect on something, you're going to keep doing it. And kind of like the whole analogy of, of, of not knowing what path you're on and if, whether or not it's going to take you to your destination. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to just pull over and, and just revisit that. And, you know, it, it's hard to take do it. That. Take a look at, take a look at the map, take a look. You know, and I think when you say that, and we're going to get ready to transition so you could talk about, you know, some of the training opportunities that we have, um, which are training sessions, information uh, that we have here at the county. But as you talk about the reflection piece, when we were uh, kids, um, my mom, my mom loved to drive and she would take us Sundays, she would take us to go to different places. And even when we we're living in New York City on Sunday, she would take us out to Long Island. She would take us to Nassau County. She would just take us different places. Um, we'd just be driving around. We got to see all these different neighborhoods. She would take us out to Westchester County. And, and those are some of the things that you do to give um, kids exposure um, as well. And then there came a point where we were actually driving down south and she was driving. She had four kids with her. Right. And my mom was not afraid to tackle uh, going across country by herself. Mm -hmm. But I was a navigator and I love being the navigator and had the map, <laughs> you know, and looking ahead in terms of different paths and where the main highway would actually cut off to another side highway. And when you're getting into Alabama and Mississippi and different things like that. So I understand what you're saying is that sometimes, of course, we had you have to stop. You have to fill up for gas. You know what? You have to stop. I remember us stopping and um, you you have to eat. Sometimes you have to get off in these uh, towns that are kind of scary. And I, you're like, oh, I remember we made this one stop. This was a long time ago, but I'll never forget it. And it was in Mississippi. And when we got out the car, the people were just looking at us. And I'm like, oh, my God, I think we stopped in the wrong area. I was a kid, too. Oh my God, <laughs> it's like these people look at us like we're crazy. Um, have you never seen New Yorkers before? All sorts of things go through your mind. But I say all that to say you have to pause. You have to take a little stop to take a look at the map. You have to get gas. You know, you have to take your bathroom breaks, eat your lunch and reflect on the journey and how far we've come. How many miles left to go, mommy? How many miles? Oh, we want to have so-and-so. We only have to do such and such. So look at how far we've come, where we are, appreciate where we are, and we still have some, some ways to go.